Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. So in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can make HTTP requests in JavaScript using the third-party library Axios. And I'll be showing you how you can make all types of HTTP requests, not just a GET request, but also POST, PUT and DELETE. Now the reason you might consider using Axios is because it really simplifies the syntax you need to write to make a HTTP request. Having said that, it is promise-based. Now, if you already understand promises, this is going to be very straightforward for you. If you don't, then you don't need to worry. I will walk through the process. Now, because Axios is a third-party library, to start using it in your project, you either have to install it locally, or you can use a CDN. So you can put a CDN in the head of your script and you can go ahead and start using it. But for completeness, I'm going to install Axios locally in this tutorial because this is probably how you would do it in production. So the first thing you need to do is to create a new project folder somewhere on your system. I've already created one on my desktop called Axios example. And inside here are just, it's just an index.html file, which is just boilerplate HTML file linked to script.js, which is currently empty. So the most common way to install Axios locally is with NPM. So for that, I'm going to need to open my terminal. So now with the terminal open, the first thing I want to do is set the directory to that of my new project folder. So I can do that by typing CD, and then I can drag and drop the folder into the terminal, and that will give me the path. Now inside my project folder, the first thing I want to do is to create a new node project. Now to do this, you need to have node installed on your system. You can check that by typing node, and then the V flag, and it will return the version of node you have installed. If it returns that you don't have Node installed, then you need to head to the Node website and install Node. So I would recommend downloading the stable version, and then once you've done that, return to the terminal. Now, best practice is to create a new Node project inside the folder, so I'll do that now. I type npm in it, and because this is just for testing, I'll accept all the defaults by including the yes parameter. That's going to answer yes to all of the questions that come up. Now I want to actually install Axios in the project folder. So I can do that typing npm install and I want to save it in the folder. So I include the save flag followed by Axios. So that will install now, it will just take a few moments. So that's installed now. So if I take a look at the contents of my project folder now, you will see there's a package.json file as a dependency Axios is listed and there's a node modules folder here where Axios is saved, so it's in the Axios folder, and then all of the files I need to run it are there. So the way that I can start actually using Axios to make HTTP requests now is in index.html. Before the link to my script, I'm going to include another script, and that's going to have a source linking to Axios in the node modules folder. So it's a bit of a long file path, unfortunately, so you need to go inside node modules, and then inside node modules, you access Axios, and then you want to access the dist folder, and then inside there, the Axios min.js. So with this script added, you're going to be loading Axios before script.js is executed, meaning that you have access to Axios in script.js. Now, the way that you can access Axios in script.js is under the variable name, Axios. So to use Axios to make HTTP requests, we're going to be using methods that are available on the object that's stored in this variable Axios. So let's start with a GET request. So to make a GET request using Axios, you want to access the GET method on the Axios object and enter the endpoint as a string inside the GET method. Now you can see up here it's predicted that I want to import the Axios package, but I've already done that with the script. This is relevant for node, require doesn't work in vanilla JavaScript on the front end. So I'm going to delete that. Now for the get request, I'm going to use a test API to do that so I can get back some real data. So I'm using repres.in. If I scroll down, it will give me the different endpoints I can use. So for a get request, post, put, delete. I'm going to make a get request and I want to get the list of users. It's showing me how it's going to come through. So it's going to be a, an array of objects with each of the users inside. So the first thing I want to do to create the endpoint is to get the base URL, 
put that into my script. And then the endpoint I want to reach for this get request is forward slash API forward slash users. And I could include a page there if I want to as well. So I'll make that exactly the same as it is in the example. So I'm going to access page two. Now this is already going to make the get request, but I still need to access the result. So the way that you access the result of a promise is using then syntax. And the result is available to you as a parameter in the function that you pass in. So I'm going to be using arrow syntax here. And so you can call this whatever you want. It's going to be the result object. And I just want to log that to the console so you can see that it worked. And to handle an error for a promise, you use the catch method. And again, place a function inside and the error object will be available to you as a parameter. And I'm going to log that to the console in case there is an error. I'm not expecting one, but it's good practice to include a catch statement. So let's see if that worked in the browser. So I refresh and you can see we've got an object returned status code 200. If I take a look inside, inside the data property, I have the data and the data is an array of objects like it was in the example online and each of those objects contains the information about each user. So the get request has been successful. You have the data available to you and you can access it in JavaScript via this res object. Now, something you might want to do from here is to create a handler function so you can handle the result there rather than inside all of this syntax. It could get a bit messy. So to do that, you can create a new function with a parameter data. And I'm just going to log data here from inside this handler function, you could just call that function passing in the data to it. So handle result, passing in res. Now in the browser, I'm getting the data object again, but this time it's being logged from line seven. So that is within the handle result function rather than within the then catch statements. So that's one way you can get the result out of the then catch statements and into a result handler. But for now, I'm just going to go back to how it was before for this tutorial. So, so I'll just log the result to the console again. Now to make a post request to a server, Axios makes that about as straightforward as it could be. So you need to access the Axios object again and the method you're looking for is post. And then inside there, you want to pass in the endpoint you want to post to. So I know that the base URL is this. So I'm going to copy that in there. And in the API documentation, I'll check now what I need to do to make a valid post request. So here's the post create request. And the endpoint is API users. So I'll enter that now. And the information the API is expecting is a data object with the name and job of a new user. And if that works, it's going to send a 201 status code. And it's also going to send back a data object mirroring the information that we entered with name and job, as well as an ID and a created at timestamp. So in our post request, we need to include an object like this one. So the way you do that in Axios is to create a second argument on the post method call, and that should be an object. And then you can just write in the data there. So in this case, I'm going to create a new user and the user is going to be called John. And the job can set to developer. Now the response and error handling for a post request is exactly the same as before. So I'm going to copy and paste that from the get request below here. So then the then and catch syntax is handling the response. Now I'm going to comment out this get request. So that is not interfering with this post request we're making. So let's see how that looks in the browser now. If I refresh, we see this is on line 11. That's our post request. And inside the data property is the data mirrored back at us, uh, name, John, job developer, and the ID and the created at timestamp are there. And we can see that the status code is 201. So that's worked just fine. Now, if you want to make a put request overwriting the data, all you have to do in Axios is exchange the post for a put. So using the put method. So I'll comment out the post request. 
So we can see the put request in action. Now I need to just check the API documentation to see what it is expecting for a put request. So put update, I need to give a user number there. So back here, I'm going to say user number three and I'll enter some slightly different data this time. So I'll say Mark and I'll change the job to gardener. Now let's see the result of this in the browser. So I'll refresh here, status code 200 open it up and the data here is being mirrored back at us. We've got the updated at timestamp. So if we look back at the API documentation, that is exactly the result we were expecting. So name, job and updated at, no ID this time, probably because we're just updating the records. So finally, let's make a delete request using Axios. So you can probably guess what method I'm looking for on the Axios object this time. So, it's delete, but I still need to check the endpoint and everything. So I'm going to have a look again at the API documentation for a delete request. So I just need to include the user number. So I won't get so much back in the response this time, but I will get some information about whether it was successful or not. So in this case, I don't actually need to change the endpoint. I'm going to delete user three, but I don't need to send any data this time so I can delete this second argument object. Now, if I save, let's have a look at the result of this in the browser. As you can see this time, there's no data object, but I know the user has been deleted from this 204 status code. So this is how you can make all types of HTTP requests using Axios. It is quite similar to fetch, but the result handling syntax is slightly simpler than for fetch. On the other hand, you do have to import Axios to your project. So which one you want to use is up to you. Axios is definitely a very popular and also well-supported option. So that is it for this tutorial. If you did find it useful, please consider hitting the like button down below. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.